Don't mind me, I'm just doing my schooling. See what we got going on here? We're gonna do some piston flip science. So basically what I got going on is I've got the degree wheel on here. I haven't found top dead center yet. I'm gonna use this piston stop. I'm gonna install the piston the normal way. I'm gonna run it up until it hits the stop. I'm gonna write down where we're at on the degree wheel. I'm gonna spin the engine the opposite way until it hits the stop. I'm gonna write down where we're at. I'm gonna find exactly halfway between those two and then I'm gonna find true top dead center. Once I do that, I've got the deck marked with a Sharpie and we're gonna take the measurement from the same spot every time. And we're gonna go a little crude on this one. I'm just gonna use my calipers. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure down to find piston position at different degrees of rotation. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go every 10 degrees. Like I talked about in the other video, top dead center is not gonna change and bottom dead center is not gonna change. But is it gonna change somewhere in the middle of the sweep? I don't know. It doesn't really make any difference on power output, the, the change in pistons, the hypothetical change of piston speed. I don't know. I'm not a physicist. Is that even the right guy? Is he the guy that figures that stuff out? Physicist? or is like an engineer. Either way, I'm not either one of those. So I'm gonna get this piston put in here and I'll bring you back when I'm trying to find temp that top dead center. Okay, so we're gonna stick the piston in, but the standard way is with that notch facing forward. And what we're gonna find out is if flipping this guy around backwards makes any difference at all. You guys might even be able to see this on camera, but you can see the offset of the pin. It's not centered on, on the piston itself. The reason I do that is because on the thrust side from the factory, it, it actually pushes the piston against the cylinder wall to quiet it down. So if moving this guy, I wonder if it makes any difference. If you want to measure this thing and see how much the pin's offset, it's going to be kind of hard to do with the rod in here, but we can get a little bit of an idea. What to measure off of? That side is 1.667. That side is 1.774. This one's actually not as offset as I was thinking it would be. I've seen some that were like, wow, that's a lot. Tenth of an inch. Let's get this thing stuck in here and see what's going on. I'm not going crazy when I torque this thing. I'm not even really torquing it. I'm just using a little quarter drive ratchet. I'm just going to snug it up. I don't think torquing it would make any difference whatsoever. It's not like this thing is going to run. I miss the ratchets I have at work. They're a lot nicer than the ones I got at home. Okay, so that part's done. Now what we're gonna do with this, is this is a homemade job. And this is actually gonna stick down past the deck. And the piston's gonna come up, you're gonna bolt this down through a head bolt hole. The piston's gonna come up and hit this. And then we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna write down where it is on the wheel. And we're gonna spin the engine the opposite way till it touches this. And then we're gonna write down where it is. And we're gonna split the two and that's gonna to be true top dead center. And then we'll zero our degree wheel on our little homemade tab. This video is gonna be boring if you guys sit here and watch me work the whole time. Hey, but we can talk about stuff. So I had this idea. Um, on, the, on my 91, 
I'm spending so much money on other stuff. I don't really want to spend any money on the car, but I really want to drive it. So I'm thinking that if we just take the 351 and we put it in the car the way it sits, you know, all 210 horsepower of it or whatever it is, but at least we could drive it. And we do upgrades as we go to see what difference it makes. I mean, if you guys want me to take the car to the track, the big problem is I'm putting a T5 behind a 351. They might hold up okay. I mean, Tustin does it all the time. They might hold up okay behind a 302. I really doubt it's going to hold up at the track behind a 351. So it's either buy a high dollar TKX or something like that transmission or stick a, excuse me, almost a hiccup or stick a, uh, um, an automatic in it. I mean, I've got a C4 that's semi built. It's got a deep pan and stuff on it, but I don't really, I don't know. That car is more of a driver. I, I really think I just need to get an LX hatch or a notch a better test car because then I wouldn't really care about it as much. Okay, so we're up against the stop and I'm at 155 degrees, so I'm going to write that down. I'm going to spin it the opposite way. And then your wheel spins and you lose everything because I didn't have my bolt tight. We're starting all over again. Hang on a second, I'll actually tighten up the bolt this time. I think it's tight enough to try this. So I've got it up against the stop and we're at 80 degrees. Okay, I'm gonna do some math magician, math magicianals, math. Ma I'm gonna do some math. And I'm gonna figure out where we need to be. Okay, so I've got all my measurements written down, uh, going the, with the piston in the standard way, and I flipped the piston. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna measure them every 10 degrees with a flip. So I'm going through and measuring this thing. And what I'm seeing so far is about 30 thousandths or so difference in a certain spot in the suite. But I'm writing it all down. And we'll talk about it here in just one minute. Okay, so I took all the measurements and I got them all written down. In the center of the sweep, there's actually a 30 thousandths difference. It, it like gains speed and then slows back down as it gets towards the bottom. That's 30 thousandths. 30 thousandths difference. And the pis p piston position in the center of the board or center of the sweep, that was that's uh, that's quite a bit. So it actually does increase, increase piston speed in the center of the in the center of the stroke. I mean, what difference does that make on the draw, on the uh, in, intake, on the intake tract, and what how much of a difference does it make when it's pushing the exhaust back out? And how much does it, of a difference does it make when it's in the power stroke, with the piston speeding up for that? Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's it's about 60 degrees or so of crankshaft rotation that that piston is moving faster and then it starts slowing back down. So there, there is, I mean, there, it's legit. Okay, so we figured out that flipping the piston around backwards does actually make a difference in pis piston position in the center of the stroke. So it changes piston position and speed for, well, it makes a, 
how do I word this and actually it makes a difference in the center of the stroke and in the and at 90 degrees that thing's really moving faster and then it starts slowing back down but there's about 60 degrees 60 to 90 degrees of crankshaft rotation where that that piston speed is has absolutely changed so the piston speed has changed and the rod angle on that crankshaft has changed i mean that's it's legit i i didn't know how much of a difference it would make i would figure we'd be talking about you know a couple thousands or something maybe but thirty thousands difference i wish i had access to a dyno but I don't really have to because Joe Sherman and guys like him already figured it out. They knew that it made a difference. And they worked the camshaft and the intake and exhaust and everything to take advantage of the increased piston speed. That's where he found the 20 plus horsepower in a small block Chevy, apparently. I mean, I'd have to measure a piston for a small block Chevy to see what their offset is. I don't know. I mean, the jury's still out. You, you guys, you guys decide. Let me know what you think. I mean, I don't know if you're in a racing class like oval track or something, where you have to. Like, back in the day, uh, early two thousands, I was involved in in multiple uh, oval track efforts, and I was building engines for the guy, and I'd go to the track and I'd tune them for him. You guys want to hear a story? Story time. Okay, so this guy approaches me, said, says, hey, I heard you're a great engine guy. I said, and he said, I've got uh, a race car that I run out at IRP, which is the local raceway park here in Indianapolis. It's called O'Reilly or Lucas Oil or something now. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's IRP in, heart, in my heart. So anyway, he's like, I, I have a car that I run out at IRP on the Oval. And I'm having some problems. Like, I'm a I'm a drag racing guy. I don't really know a whole lot about oval track stuff. Pretty sure I can figure it out though. So off to the track I go. Um, he makes some laps, comes in, and the glow the headers are glowing red hot. I'm like, holy shit, the timing's off on this thing. So I check the timing. It's good. Well, it's got to be running lean then. So I pull the primary. So we had to run two barrels. So I pull the float bowl off. I go up four jet sizes, send him back out. He comes back in, headers glowing red hot. I'm like, what is going on? Pull the float bowl off, go up four more jet sizes, send him back out. I'm like taking big stabs at it, trying to, I mean, headers are glowing red hot. Out he goes, makes five or six laps, comes back in, headers glowing red hot. And I'm sitting there looking at it, racking my brain trying to figure it out. And he's like, hey, you know, we should probably put some fuel in this thing. And out of the corner of my eye, I see him take the top off of the fuel cell and set it on top of the cell, right on top of all the little pieces of rubber from the tires. And then he puts it back on and away he thinks he's ready to go again. I'm like, stop. Go to the fuel filter, I pull it off and it is full of rubber. Put a new fuel filter on it, go back down to the jet sizes that he had in it before and send them back out. And he comes back in and the headers aren't glowing red hot anymore. I thought that was kind of funny. But back to my point. If you're in a racing series like that one where we had to use either uh, cast or hyper eutectic rebuilder style pistons that couldn't be anything trick, uh, there, was a, there was a compression ratio rule, camshaft rule. So I could play around with cam timing. I could play around with, um, I go with this anyway all that other stuff is irrelevant the point is that if you're a racing series like that if you did the piston flip thing like Joe Sherman said I think you might actually notice a difference that's what Joe Sherman was actually known for is for oval track stuff using a lot of stock components um, and he he built some winning combinations and Maybe, maybe he was on to something. But if I was building an engine, which most of mine are, they're forged piston deals, they're aftermarket connecting rods, they're big cylinder heads, and 
a mild combo is you know 375 400 horsepower I don't I don't worry with this stuff I force pistons aftermarket force pistons the pin is right dead nuts in the center um, cast rebuilders and and 90% of hyper eutectics out there that have four valve reliefs four valve reliefs two valve relief pistons this this doesn't work four valve relief pistons I think maybe if you do swap stuff around now one thing I ran into and I kind of feel like an idiot is when I was putting this when I flipped this piston and I was putting it back in I looked at the rod cap and I would put it back in by looking at the bearing remember we talked about multiple videos ago the way the the rod bearing sits in the cap and how it's kind of offset to one side that's so it doesn't ride on the fillet of the crankshaft well when I look at a rod cap and bearing my way my brain works it's like okay well this section goes towards the crank the fillet and I went to bolt it back together and then everything this felt funny and I had the cap on backwards for the orientation of the rod but I flipped all around and everything was fine. Not like I was putting it together to run that way. But if you're going to do the piston flip, if you take a piston out of one bank and you flip it, it needs to go to the opposite bank so that the connecting rod stays oriented correctly on the rod journal on the crankshaft. But on this one, since I only had one connecting rod on that journal and there was plenty of room for the rod to float around on the piston, I didn't have to worry about the that was almost a hiccup again. I didn't have to worry about the bearing digging into the fillet of the crankshaft. It was fine. It kind of moved itself over just so it was riding on the journal itself. But I think that's it for this video, guys. Uh, we did some science and we actually got some results. I don't know that I was expecting that, but it's, it's legit. Honestly, mechanically, yes, there is a difference. Performance-wise, I have no idea if it makes a difference or not. So in my mind, the jury is still out because I have no first-hand experience with it. I have never personally tried it. I just remember that reading that article years ago uh, on Joe Sherman building the, the, the 306, the 400 horsepower 306 using mostly stock stuff that... I have a hair floating in front of my eyeballs. It's like it's stuck in my eyebrow. I think I got it. So that's it, guys. Get out in the shop, work on your projects. You have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.